Have you noticed that when you run Gulp Serve on a SharePoint Framework project that's created using the SharePoint Framework version 1.17 or higher, the SharePoint Framework toolchain reflects an invalid URL? That's because by default, the URL isn't valid. And it stems from a change that Microsoft made into the SharePoint Framework and the SharePoint Framework 1.17 release. Now, if you take a closer look at your console, you're gonna see what the root of the problem really is. In this video, I'll explain why you're seeing this and not only how to get around it, but why this is a great improvement for SharePoint Framework developers. Hi, I'm Andrew. And if this video interests you, please hit that like button below the video. It helps me reach more people just like you and grow this channel. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to my channel with that button below the video to see when I publish more videos for Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure full stack developers. And be sure to check out my bi-weekly newsletter where I talk about the same topics and share the most important news in the Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure space for full stack developers delivered straight to your inbox. Starting with the SharePoint Framework version 1.17, Microsoft replaced the hosted Workbench URL that's launched when you execute the Gulp Serve task with a dynamic value. Now this is defined in your project's config serve JSON file and it's in the initial page property. Notice the tenant domain string. The SPFX build toolchain is gonna to replace this value, including the curly brackets, on the fly when you execute the Gulp Serve task with a value that's defined in an environment variable on your local workstation. Developers can use the SPFX underscore serve underscore tenant underscore domain OS environment variable to specify the tenant domain or the site URL for the serve configuration across different SharePoint framework solutions. If a URL in the serve configuration, for example, the page URL for a field customizer contains the tenant domain placeholder as well, it's also gonna be automatically replaced with the variables value as well. Refer back to that error that I showed you at the beginning of this video. Notice the line in the console that says that it's opening the URL in the browser that still has that curly bracket, tenant domain, close curly bracket placeholder. Clearly that URL is not gonna work. That indicates the environment variable hasn't been set in my test and that's not a real URL anyway. So why did Microsoft make this change? Well, previously developers had to change the hosted Workbench URL on every single project that they wanted to test. The default URL that was set on the .config slash serve.json files initial page property was set to the HTTPS colon whack whack enter dash your dash SharePoint dash site slash and some other stuff after it. Well, that doesn't work either. This extra task of changing the URL every time you wanted to test your project, that was a burden to SharePoint Framework developers. Most developers use the same Microsoft 365 tenant to test their SharePoint Framework solutions. So why not just give them an option to set it once on their workstation? Well, that's what this change to using the environment variable approach is intended to address. It's improving SPFX developers quality of life. So how do you use it? Well, it really depends on the platform that you're using, uh, but once you set it, this is what you should see. Now, if you're using Windows for your developer experience, I want you to refer to Microsoft documentation on setting your environment variables. Now to check if you have the environment variable set, I want you to run one of the following commands, either set in the name of the environment variable, or say echo in name of the environment variable that's surrounded with percentage signs, as you see here. If it's set, then you're gonna see the value printed to the screen. But if it isn't set, as you see here, nothing is gonna be displayed. To set the value, I want you to enter the following command in the console, replacing the URL with your preferred URL. Now, the following example is demonstrating using a tenant that's named Y77K1. And now when you repeat the process of outputting it uh, to the console, we'll see that it has been set. Now, this is great, but this is only going to set this environment variable for the current console. And that's not probably not what we want. Instead, we want to permanently set it so it's persisted across reboots. And when I say permanently, I don't really mean permanently because we can always change it later. Um, all this does is it just configures every time I open up the console, it'll make sure that it sets this, uh, this value again. So to do this, I'm first gonna launch the control panel and then go to the systems advanced system settings option switch over to the advanced tab, then select environment variables, then select system variables for all users. And I'm gonna create a new environment variable named SPFX underscore serve underscore tenant underscore domain and use the domain of my Microsoft 365 tenant that I want to uh, set it to as you see here. Now, what if you're not on Windows? What if like me, you're using Mac OS for your developer experience? 
Well, refer to Apple's documentation on setting environment variables. Uh, there's an article, Use Environment Variables in Terminal on Mac, that I'll link to here. So first, to check to see if you have the variable set, I want you to run the following command. We'll say echo and then dollar sign with the name of the environment variable. Now, if it's set, I'm gonna see the value printed to the screen. But if it isn't set, like you see here, then nothing is gonna be displayed. So to set it, I'm gonna enter the following command in the console and replace the URL with my preferred URL. And again, just like my last demo, this example is gonna demonstrate using a tenant named Y77K1. Now, again, I could just repeat the process of outputting it just to verify that it has been set. And here we can see that everything is set and it's gonna work correctly. However, just like Windows, this is only gonna be set for this instance of the terminal. So to permanently set this, I wanna add this export op line that you see right here. I wanna add this to the end of my profiles configuration file. So for example, that could be my ZSHRC configuration file. Uh, this way, every time I launch a new console, the environment variable will be set. So just like Windows, it's not a permanent change. It just sets the, the environment variable every time that the console is launched. So I'm curious, what do you think about using this environment variable? It's supposed to improve your SPFX development experience. Does it? I think it does. But let me know by dropping a comment below and let me know if you want to see more videos about SharePoint Framework development topics. And if you like this video or you found it useful, give me a thumbs up. It helps me grow this channel by reaching more people just like you. And like I said before, if you haven't already, subscribe by smashing that subscribe button below the video so you'll see when I publish more videos for full stack developers on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure topics. I'm Andrew Connell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.